be up to some shenanigans on uh, Lowry's side as well. Uh, we've yeah. seen it have its uh, signature move, Decorate, which sharply raises the attack and special attack, uh, I believe, of the uh, yeah. target Pokemon. So um, Lowry's going to be able to boost himself up, make himself a lot stronger at the same time. So something that Antoine may have to watch out for if he sees it coming. Oh yeah, 100%. It's just being able to just uh, uh, get that huge amount of damage output coming out from your end. And it can also go through Protect. And people have to remember, Decorate can go through Protect. But we are going to be actually seeing Antoine going ahead and leading with that Lapras and Talonflame combination. Whilst we're going to be seeing Lowry go ahead and get more defensive, but at the same time looks like more of a Trip Room setup with that Porygon 2 and the Amoongus. Trick Room indeed, and uh, you've got Trick Room versus Tailwind strategies here, but either way, Antoine has got that Lapras on the field right early uh, in the in the game, and it's going to be threatening that Amoongus, which is a big threat to uh, Antoine's team, especially if uh, Porygon gets up that Trick Room this turn, and Amoongus is one of the faster Pokemon in Trick Room uh, to be launching off those spores and stopping Antoine's team doing too much damage. Of course, yeah. Getting that G-Max Resonance off early is quite beneficial for Antoine's side of the field. So, uh, you know, going to be taking maximum advantage of all of the turns that uh, that Aurora Veil is going to be in effect. Yeah, and we're just going to go ahead and see a Dynamax straight off the bat. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think this is coming from Antoine's side. This will be the Lapras. Um, and it is confirmed to be the Lapras. That G-Max Lapras going ahead, wanting to get that G-Max Resonance off as soon as it can. Um, or even set the rain. I would probably... Because there are certain players that can choose to go ahead and use the G-Max Resonance on a ladder Ooh. turn to try to take advantage. But we're going to actually see a Dynamax coming up from Lowry's side. Come on, Amoongus. What has this Amoongus. This Amoongus. Is, oh, no! It's the, it's the duck. It's the Porygon 2, ladies and gents. Dynamaxing. We've seen uh, Porygon 2 Dynamax in previous weeks from Matty Morgan. Lowry following fashion straight away, not opting for a trick room, whilst the taunt comes out from the Talonflame into the Amoongus, which hasn't gone for Rage Powder, so it hasn't wasted its turn just yet. Uh, G-Max Resonance does come out from that Lapras, goes into the Amoongus, and wow, actually brings it down to 1 HP. Is that a focus sash? That is confirmed mm. to be a focus sash. Uh, very well played. Being able to deal that much damage would suggest maybe a life orb uh, set, as we do see from that recoil just now. As the Porygon 2 does go for max strike, targets the Talonflame. Doesn't pick up a KO. I think it just picked up a KO. Oh, it's oh, a critical, critical hit as well. Um, <laughs> it might have actually benefited from that download boost, uh, which gave it the special attack. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't actually, unfortunately, see. As the Amoogus does try to go for the Spore, but also fails, thanks to that talk. You know, up to the focus, Sasha, I was just thinking, hey, if that Amoongus went for its G-Max, or Dynamax, sorry, <laughs> it would have survived that G-Max resonance. Uh, unfortunately for it, the focus, Sasha, allowed it to uh, live on one HP, and it will live to spore another day. Uh, it's going to have to switch out and switch back in, most likely, to be able to do that. So uh, the Max Strike, though, coming out from Porygon 2. Um, not the Porygon of choice for, for Max Strike in this format, actually. Uh, Porygon Z more likely to be dishing out those max strikes in uh, in this format but a yeah. nice reduction in speed from Lowry so uh, that Amoongus is going to come in really big later down the line Oh yeah, and that's why it's switched out for the Alolan Marowak as the Urshifu does go for close combat into the Porygon 2, does drop both its defense and special defense at the cost of dealing good amounts of chip damage onto that Porygon 2. Max Strike comes out in retaliation. The Porygon 2 moves first uh, ahead of the Lapras, worth noting as well, thanks to <laughs> the, that speed control it has been exerting yeah. from its side that you really don't expect to see. As the Max Geyser now comes out from the Lapras, does go into the Porygon 2, uh, um, doesn't deal as much damage as it would have liked, but it's still really good damage on a Dynamax Eviolite Porygon 2. Does set the rain up as well for following turns. Yeah, I mean, Porygon 2 is known for being really bulky, and Dynamax kind of makes it a little bit unfair. Uh, question is, is how this Porygon 2 is trained, and whether after that... Uh 
after that max strike on the Urshifu, uh, will it be able to outspeed the Urshifu or not? Or is it actually a trick room build in disguise? Uh, yeah. Maybe that Porygon 2 is a little bit slower, not going to be able to outspeed the Urshifu. And another close combat likely going to pick up the KO. And of course, Marowak, even if it is faster than the Lapras in this turn after two max strikes, is going to be really under threat from that Lapras. Yeah, talking about under threat, it's just being a bit cheeky, going for an ally switch, pre <laughs> predicting that close combat, which goes into the Marowak slot. That it is immune to it, thanks to its ghost typing, as the Porygon 2 is more than free to pick up that KO onto the Urshifu, as well as bring that Lapras down to minus three in its speed stages right now. As it does go for that Max Geyser, will it be trying to target that Porygon 2 again? No, it actually tried to go for the Marowak this turn round, but actually... <laughs> Finds a uh, sitting duck right there, being able to get knocked <laughs> out uh, during this game one. And, hey, I um, thought ducks like water, but you know, apparently I, not. Lapras is really taking this. Apparently, toy ducks do not, unfortunately. Um, Porygon 2 is going to be going down as the Marowak will live at least for another turn. It will be able to move. As uh, now, Lowry is going to have to think about which Pokemon to bring in, maybe in a moon just once again. Well, it could be, and certainly Amoongus is going to have a good time against that Lapras being uh, so slow now, going to definitely be able to outspeed it, and of course Lapras going back into its normal form now. Uh, Magnezone coming out from Antoine is a good thing for him, but, uh, you know, it's going to be a real case of whether Magnezone is able to knock out the Amoongus before the Amoongus is able to put the Lapras to sleep, before the Lapras is able to knock out Marowak. Which yeah. uh, is the thing that Magnazone is afraid of. So, uh, a little bit of a, a, a linked turn here where you've got lots of different factors going on. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, the other factor going on here is Regenerator and whether uh, Amoongus could just switch out again and maybe get some health back so it can Rage Powder fur further. Yeah, but it's not going to this turn round. It is just going to go for the Protect as the Marowak switches out for the Lapras. Not expecting an Electric-type move, given the fact that that Marowak do usually uh, run Lightning Rod. As the Flash Cannon comes <laughs> out from the Magna Zone into the Amoongus' Protect, and the Water Absorb reveal from Lowry's Lapras, anticipating that Hydro Pump. Uh, yeah, and brilliant switch out there for Lowry. Uh, getting the best end of that and making sure his Lapras can come in for free. Now, Lapras, of course, isn't a fan of uh, going up against Magnezone, but of course, uh, we have got the Rage Powder in play. Uh, that Marowak in the back is likely holding, ha ha has the Lining Rod ability, and so, yeah. uh, you know, whether or not the Magnezone is able to get at that Lapras and to be able to pick up the knockout is really questionable at this stage. Oh, I think it's about trying to go for a read from Antoine Sad, maybe expecting that Marowak to come in, but this time around, the Magnezone is just going to go for a protect as the Lapras on Lowry's side is just going to go ahead and get a Parish Song going, uh, singing those vocal chords strong and well as the Lapras goes for Hydro Pump. Does it actually go? It anticipated the switch in very well played from Antoine's side. Very impressive indeed. Picks up the one-hit KO, as well as, of course, lands. Um, definitely always picks up that KO in the rain and life all boosted. Whilst this actually leaves a very interesting endgame. It does, and of course, uh, you've got this uh, real, real... Uh... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get some words out here. You've got Perisong going out. Perisong has put the game on a timer, right? Yeah. So the question is, is can Lowry hold off until the end? The only Pokemon that the timer is not on is Amoongus, but Amoongus yep. is under threat from the Lapras, right? Mm -hmm. And so if the Lapras goes to sleep, uh, if the Lapras on Lowry's side of the field can protect long enough, mm -hmm. the, it's going to be a really close game. Of course, actually thinking about it, the Perish Song, the person that wins the Perish Song is the person that has the last Pokemon faint, if all of the Pokemon faint. So if Antoine yes. is able to knock out the Amoongus, mm -hmm. Lapras on Antoine's <clears throat> side of the field is definitely the slowest Pokemon. We've seen that after all the max strikes. Yeah. Um, well, uh, and yeah. so, yeah, it, it really does come down to a case of whether Antoine is able to knock out this Amoongus or not. And I think Lowry does uh, anticipate that and tries to protect the Amoongus as his Lapras does go for a freeze dry, deals good chip damage onto the opposing Lapras, but um, in return gets a Thunderbolt straight to the face. Uh, doesn't actually go down this turn round as Antoine's uh, Lapras itself tried to go for a Blizzard and wasn't able to at least land a hit on the Lapras. 
exactly that and and now the the question is you know um, whether whether or not Amoongus can survive a flash cannon that spore is almost certain to be going into the Lapras slot on Antoine's side of the field so uh, Lapras definitely the Pokemon that could uh, potentially KO Amoongus on uh, Lowry's side of the field and it doesn't look like that's likely to be happening this turn no, but the Lapras on Larry's side, as we did see the previous turn, had Life Orb, and that shows... Oh, but that is a critical hit. Nearly picks up the KO on the Magna Zone. Oh, my lord. Whilst the Magna Zone goes ahead for the Flash Cannon into the Amoongus. Will the Amoongus move first? No, it doesn't, because, uh, of course, I was trying to think about the speed drops before, and the Blizzard from Antoine's side Ooh. will actually be landing on both the Lapras and the Amoongus on Lowry's side, being able to grant Antoine that Game 1 win. Yeah, it looks like uh, that Amoongus was a bit slower than I thought, and maybe the Lapras was a little bit faster than uh, than maybe I thought it was, probably opting for uh, being as fast as it can to take most advantage of that Tailwind. So, uh, yeah. yeah, really nice there, a really nice end game for Antoine and Lowry. Although it looked like he was in command, uh, big old duck and playing playing really well with it. Uh, mm -hmm didn't wasn't quite able to pick up the end game and you know it may be the case that going into game two Lowry has to really think about being a little bit more aggressive with mm -hmm. his end game rather than trying to rely on that perish song that didn't quite work out so well for him this game Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, Antoine did have that option going for him, but at the same time, he was able to out-resource uh, Lowry. Even though, like you said, Lowry did look like he definitely was um, taking control of the momentum of Game 1. It's just at some point during the middle of it, I feel like Antoine started uh, getting some... Uh, some uh, moves back for him, mm. being able to get, regain that momentum. He did go for that Hydro Pump into that incoming, that switching in Marowak, was able to pick up the one-hit KO as well. That further helped yep. his uh, situation uh, because, of course, he felt like Lowry had to go for the switch out and maybe just to be sure to safeguard that lap press against that Magnazone Thunderbolt. But um, it could have been seen as potentially an obvious switch in, but it's not only about what you think is an obvious obvious play it's about actually going through with it because it takes mm. a lot of guts to mm. try to depend on a read you have to be a hundred percent sure at least or should i say 90 percent confident <laughs> that it will uh work but um very well played from both players there because that honestly looks so close it, it really was and uh, hopefully we get a bit of another close match in game two and that's what we're going into now so let's see if we're going to see exactly the same or maybe these players are going to switch it up yeah, that'll be interesting to see because, um, you know, Lowry does have that threat of trying to go for the Trick Room as he did with the Trick Room lead. But um, like you said, we're going to be seeing the same lead coming out from Antoine's side in that Talonfly and Lapras, whilst we are going to be seeing a switch up on Lowry's side uh, with the Alcremi deciding to pop its face onto uh, the field in game two, accompanied by that Lapras on its side. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, there's still the threat of Tailwind here from Antoine. Um, I think Antoine's probably quite confident that Lowry's not going to be going for a Trick Room strategy going into this game, given what we saw with Max Right Porygon 2. Has yeah. led the same, decided if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Lowry's going back to the drawing board here, bringing his own Lapras in much earlier in the game. Uh, likely going to be going for that G-Max Resonance as well as Antoine. Uh, it looks like we're going for the Gigantamax straight away. Uh, I didn't see whether that was Antoine or it was Lowry, because the likelihood is that both of those Laprases are going to go big this turn. Oh, yeah, and uh, I think it is on Antoine's side. Uh, yeah, definitely confirmed on Antoine's side right now. He will be having the speed control in contrast to Lowry, which at the minute doesn't look like he's got speed control on the field. But he's still staying in. He's not risking any switch outs whatsoever. He's happy with his lead uh, from the current moment. He goes ahead, gets that G-Max Lapras of his own onto the field in that huge form of which we all fear and um, <laughs> uh, love at the same time. As uh, we're going to be seeing 
see in the out frame. He actually moved first. Looks like it's a choice stuff variant, and there's no tailwind from the Talonflame as well. Does boost the Lapras straight up to plus two special attack. The Talonflame not expecting that Alcrimi being so quick. Tried to go for a taunt into that slot, but actually wasn't able to do much right now as the G-Max Resonance does come out from Antoine's side, mm. which so far looks to be the faster Lapras into that Alcrimi slot. Doesn't pick up the KO, but comes so close in doing so whilst being able to set the Aurorvel up and going for Antoine's side as we are to be seeing the same mirrored move coming out from Lapras. G-Max Resonance into the Talonflame, nearly picking up the KO, showing, of course, that that Aurora Veil um, proved to be so crucial right there because mm -hmm. if this mm -hmm. was, for example, a big speed tie that Ant that Lowry lost two times in a row, that is so rough. It really is, and we're seeing the same sort of behavior from Antoine in this game as we did in the first game, uh, opting for both taunt and an attack on a quite significant uh, threat to Antoine's side of the field, wanting to stop Al Creamy uh, doing any shenanigans, let's say, uh, yeah. but also knocking it out at the same time, hoping that uh, Lowry will be caught in that moment, uh, going for something like Decorate that he did, uh, Antoine probably predicting, as you said, uh, the Alcrimi not quite as fast as it actually is um, and wanting to both taunt it and knock it out at the same time. Uh, Max Guard, though, coming out from Lapras on Antoine's side of the field, so no uh -huh. more damage this turn. Oh, Lowry going for the <laughs> signature show-off move of Struggle, <laughs> given the fact that he knew that he was going to outspeed that Talonflame as it did in turn one, knew that he had to land on that Talonflame it was so, so low with its HP, and even though it's a struggle move, um, he was able to pick up the KO, so very well played from uh, Lowry there. That was very, very impressive. I love that so much. So much. That, I mean, look, you know, the the Gale Wings was broken by the G-Max Resonance in the last turn. As you said, the health was low on Talonflame. Alcrimi, not really known for its attacking stat, but actually, uh, he does two, Lowry does two things there. Knocks out the Talon Flame, that removes the ability for Antoine to Tailwind yeah. or attack further. Um, but the second thing it does is knocks himself out, which gives him an absolutely brilliant positive momentum swing into that Cinderace, which is now going for a high jump kick. Gonna land on the Urshifu and does Ooh. so much damage. Uh, does, Urshifu yeah. only surviving with its focus sash. Focus Sash reveal on that Urshfu as the close combat from that Urshfu comes out into the Lapras. Um, uh, doesn't pick up a crit that it would have liked to if it did have uh, its uh, signature move going, uh, depending on Lapras's ability, of course. But we are going to be seeing the Max Geyser from Antoine's side go straight into the Cinderace slot. And because of a Libero changing its typing, it will be surviving as well, thanks to that Aurora Veil set up in the previous turn, too, from Lowry's Lapras. As we are going to be seeing Lowry's, uh, Lowry's Lapras go for that Max Geyser. Should be a double up into the Urshfu and it is so wanting to get rid of it whilst in this situation the Cinderace is actually free depending on which Pokemon comes in from Antoine's side it's free to move first yet again it almost certainly is and Magnezone coming out uh, definitely if you're a Magnezone a Cinderace with high jump kick uh, likely a fire move but less important at the moment with that rain on the field um, yeah. is definitely not something that you want to see High jump kick, though, is one of those moves. If uh, Antoine does have the ability to protect, mm -hmm. very, very difficult to to manage because, of course, if you go into a protect, if you if you miss your move even, uh, you do take 50% of your health as damage, and Cinderace yeah. doesn't have 50% of its health left, so uh, <laughs> right. a little bit of a gamble there. Um, Magnazone on the field, though, you know, we could be seeing uh, another Perish Trap from Lapras, but I really do think that uh, Lapras on Larry's side of the field is really going to kick off and go on the offensive this turn. Oh yeah, does it make sense given the fact that it's still a plus two, ladies and gents, of its special attack. Mm. As we had to be seeing the Cinderace switch out for that Marowak and uh, the Lapras on Antoine's side, trying to go for that safe protect, uh, whilst there's no protect from coming out from the Magnazone, and the Lapras will be able to protect itself from that freeze dry. Magnazone does go for the Thunderbolt, which goes straight into that Alolan Marowak's Lightning Rod. So I feel Lowry, Lowry being able to position himself so, so well, uh, given the fact that he was able able to shut down that tailwind i still think that proved to be so so crucial it really has been and uh, you know it, 
we have seen the Lapras on Antoine's side of the field move before the Lapras on Lowry's side of the field. So maybe these, these Lapras are trained differently, but really yeah. it is up to Lowry now to just make sure he preserves his Pokemon, preserves that Marowak, which is protecting the Lapras. And really the question is, is whether Antoine's able to knock out that Magnus, uh, that uh, Marowak that protecting yeah. the Lapras. It's not able to this turn around as the Marowak does go for a protect and protect itself from that Hydra Pump on uh, the opposing Lapras as Freeze Dry comes out from Lowry's Lapras into the opposing one. Deals good damage over time as both Aurora Veils do now wear off and the Magnezone did try to go for a Flash kind of cheeky little one into the Marowak <laughs> but unfortunately failed for itself. A big question is, is we've seen Ally Switch in the previous turn, uh, previous <laughs> game. Is Ally Switch coming out? Oh, here we go, Hydro Pump. Oh, Antoine Ooh. gets it straight into the Marowak. Marowak is not enjoying that one bit. That is a one-hit knockout, boosted by the rain. No Aurora Veils in effect, and a bit of life orb damage there. Wow. Yeah, and the Freeze Dry will be coming out from the Lapras on Lowry, being able to pick up the KO onto its Arch Nemesis on the other side of the field, as the Magnus Zone should be now free to go for the Thunderbolt, and does so. We'll be able to pick up a KO on the Lapras, leaving a very, very interesting uh, 1v1 scenario. I'm curious to see if the rain will wear off as well, because that those Pyro Balls could be coming out. It could also depend on what ability that Magnus Zone does have, because it could mm. potentially have Sturdy, uh, can't it? It can, and uh, the big question is here is whether it has Protect as well. Uh, Magnus hmm. are not a Pokemon that necessarily needs it uh, to be used, and Pyro Ball's coming out, we're still in the rain, so not going to be as effective as it could be. Ooh. Magnus are known for its physical defense, hanging on, activating that weakness policy. <laughs> Magnazone is going to be going on the offensive this turn, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Thunderbolt, boosted oh. up, Cinderace, not with much health left, definitely can't survive. And that is your match to Antoine. Antoine going ahead and actually pulling through when you really did not expect it. I mean, you, you just thought that Lowry had so much momentum, especially in game two. And mm. I feel like it all came down to that one. Of course, it came down to multiple different turns. Like, for example, yeah. being able to shut down the Tailwind, I think, proved to be so crucial. But... I feel like when, because we have seen the Marowak reveal ally switch, so it was kind of a game of chicken, wasn't it? Uh, between Larry a little bit, and Antoine. A little bit. It, it was, yeah. wasn't it? Because, because it was it's all about, do you click it or not? And it's so funny because it, a game of chicken, when you have two teams that are GMAX resonancing uh, against each other, and of course GMAX resonance is the ultimate not chicken play. You know, yeah. you say, hey, I'm going 